Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib and it's time once again for your weekly wrap up. And this week I thought we would do an update on my Gigabit Pro connection that I am paying a small fortune for from Comcast because this past week they doubled the speed from three gigabits to six. And we're gonna take a look and see how it's running right now. Now I have a full playlist documenting this process to get this connection installed at lon.tv slash gig pro. This is kind of like the secret menu item at Comcast. It's very expensive. It's about $320 a month all in, but there's no data caps and it's a fully fiber optic connection. It is Metro Ethernet, which means that you're basically hooked up the same way they hook up a whole neighborhood with a direct fiber connection in my case, all the way back to the cable head end. So everything that I am transmitting and receiving is basically a straight shot from here to about seven or eight miles away where the Comcast facility is located. It works great. It's been incredibly reliable over the last year and a half. I've had very little downtime, and the only downtime that I've had was maybe some maintenance that they might be doing on the other end of the connection. But for the most part, it has been rock solid. My streaming has been rock solid, and it was much better than the coaxial connection that I had before. One of the issues that I had here at my house was that I was the last house on the line from the node, and I was not able to maintain a consistent live streaming presence because my packets were getting all jumbled up as they worked their way through a number of coax amplifiers. But now I am fully <laughs> dialed in with fiber, and it works great. Now, over the last two weeks, Comcast has started their process of upgrading these connections. There wasn't any downtime. I just went from having a three gigabit connection to a six gigabit one through the SFP port on the Comcast supplied switch that they hook up. And there's actually seven gigabits of total symmetrical bandwidth here because you get six gigs on the SFP plus connector, which you have to use one of those modules with like a fiber optic module. And then there's also a one gig ethernet RJ45 that they also include. And if you're pretty savvy with PF Sense, you can actually combine those two together and get an aggregate seven gigabits symmetrical through this connection. Now, in order to make use of this connection, you do have to come up with your own way to route the high speed traffic. They do force you to rent uh, this Netgear router, which is only suitable for the gigabit connection. It just has gigabit ethernet on the back, nothing faster than that. So in order to get that six, you need a router that can take an SFP plus connection or build one yourself. I, however, have been using the Unify Dream Machine Pro. And in full disclosure, they sent this router to the channel to review when we were setting up all of this stuff free of charge. I did have some trouble with it early on in its life. I did a video on that because two firmware updates came down that corrupted the configuration. And at that time, they hadn't offered any way to back up the configuration before it updated. Thankfully, they've rectified a lot of that stuff and it's been running smoothly ever since I complained about it. But still, uh, it felt like a very beta experience for a while, but the router has settled down and so far, it's been able to handle all of the speeds that my uh, connection is supplying. However, if I was doing a lot of the deep packet inspection stuff, I would not be able to handle the full speed. So right now I'm just kind of having it work as a router and not digging into every packet that's coming through. So if you do have some significant security concerns, uh, I would suggest going with something that you can build yourself like a PFSense router, which will give you a lot more flexibility. Now let's take a look and see how fast this network is performing. And I'll also show you some things that you have to think about when you have this much bandwidth because not everything is going to give you the full blast all the time. Let's have a look. All right, so we're gonna kick things off with a speed test over to a Comcast server in Plainfield, New Jersey. This is not the closest one to me, but it's the one that can sustain the connection the best in so far as bandwidth is concerned. And as you can see here, we're pushing north of five gigabits here on the downstream. Over the weekend, I was able to get it to the full six gigabits, but I'm guessing there's more traffic going on uh, during the week here. And you can see that my upstream is pretty close to that as well. I have my Mac here hooked up to a Thunderbolt uh, 10 gig ethernet adapter. And this shows you just what you have to go through to be able to take advantage of this connection. 
Now, of course, the internet is a network of networks, and a lot of times when you run the speed test app, you're running that speed test on your ISP's network. So even though I'm connecting to a server far away, I'm not having to leave Comcast network and connect someplace else. So if you start looking around for other servers to try, like the Connecticut Education Network here in my home state, you will see that you won't get this speed from CEN to Comcast and back again. So the best we're getting here on the downstream is about 300 megabits per second. And this might be all that CEN allows for the speed test app, or this could be all that they've negotiated with Comcast insofar as what they allow to traverse their network. And this network is what my local high school uses. They've got a two gigabit symmetrical connection that works great. Uh, but as you can see here, the interoperability between networks is always going to be an issue. Now here's another example of me uploading a video to YouTube. And as you can see here, the upload speed, according to my Dream Machine router, uh, taps out at around 700 megabits per second. And we average much lower than that, even though we've got six gigabits of uh, total bandwidth available to us. And this is the kind of thing that you'll see no matter what you do, just because there's a lot of agreements between how these networks interoperate and they're only going to allow so much bandwidth to traverse them at any given time. That said, my upload speed prior to this was about 10 megabits per second. It used to take an hour, sometimes even a little more to upload one of my videos to YouTube. And I like to get everything published by around 6.45 p.m. or so. So now that I have this connection, my uploads take maybe 30 to 45 seconds, which bought me back a lot of time because I can work further into the afternoon and get things polished and ready uh, versus having to rush to get everything uploaded by 3 or 4 p.m. And of course, YouTube is not the only place that I send video to. I also send video to Amazon and to Floatplane. So my entire upload process now takes maybe five minutes, whereas before it took hours to babysit everything. Now, if you're curious about how my network is configured, you can go over to lon.tv slash home network and see all the stuff that I had to get uh, to make full use of this connection. I haven't changed anything since that video, so that's all pretty much up to date. The only change that I've made most recently is to my production machine, the one that records these videos. I was having trouble every once in a while when I was pushing a lot of data getting to or beyond the one gigabit mark. Every once in a while, my whole network would lock up and I had a feeling it had something to do with the network uh, card inside the computer along with the Cat5e wiring that I was using, which is always a big no-no when you're trying to go multi-gigabit. So I switched out to a fiber-based card, which seems to be resolving things. And we'll see how it runs now. I have a video coming up this week on that card and how I hooked it all up, so stay tuned for that. Now, a lot of you write in asking how to get this service. What I have found when you call customer service, they have no idea what you're talking about. They get confused with the regular gigabit product, which is their coax gigabit down 35 up that most consumers get. So you really have to be persistent. One thing that people have been successful with is going through the Twitter account for Comcast called Comcast Cares or going over to their Reddit page here uh, lon.tv slash Comcast Reddit and making a request to their support staff there and they'll route it to the right place. Now what happens is that they do kind of a paper-based site survey to see how close you are to their network. Because remember, even though they've got fiber all over the place, they can't connect you directly to it in most cases and you have to find a place where you can connect in. And initially when they did that, they said it was going to cost north of like $45,000 to hook it up. And I had to get persistent and kind of understand what was in my neighborhood. And once I was a little more persistent and they sent somebody out to actually look at everything, they were able to get me connected to a fiber splice node or whatever uh, at the end of my street. And that was a lot more reasonable from an installation standpoint. Uh, basically you pay about, I think it was about $1,000 or so for installation, but you have to get within a certain construction cost because they do cover part of the construction. And if you go beyond that, uh, they're gonna require you to make up the difference. And a friend of mine around the corner had to pay a lot more because they, he had nothing nearby that they could wire him into. So it's going to vary dramatically based on your location. And when you go out looking around, you know, I, I thought initially that this was my cable node right at the end of my driveway, but it turns out uh, this was just an amplifier. 
But like I said, at the end of my street, there was a fiber splice point and that had some room on it and they were able to get me connected to it. So what you need to do is really look at all the stuff hanging on the pole, go on the internet and see what it is. And if they tell you you're too far away and say, hey, but what about this thing at the end of my street? That might coax them into uh, getting a physical site survey going and move you along in the process because I spent about a year kind of arguing with them before they finally took a look and said, oh yeah, we can hook them up through that and I was able to get going from there. So overall, I remain satisfied with my Gigabit Pro connection here from Comcast. Yes, it costs a lot of money, but I am happy with the fact that they doubled the speed without increasing the cost. I am about a year and a half into this and I've got about another year and a half on my contract agreement with them. So we'll see if they raise the price when we uh, get into year four. But so far, so good on this. And you kind of get used to having this reservoir of bandwidth available to you at all times. And even when we had two kids on Zoom calls along with my wife doing stuff, I was able to get my uh, streams out there without issue and upload to my heart's content without uh, any interruptions to anything. So this has been uh, overall a good thing, but an expensive thing. Now there's a lot more competition coming into my area. That's gonna be a topic of an upcoming wrap up video because I'm starting to see services improving dramatically now that consumers have more choice. Go figure, and we'll cover that in a future video. Now this week's wrap up as always is being brought to you by all of you. And I wanna thank some folks who contributed via Super Chat and Super Thanks. And I'm putting Peter's name back up here because I completely messed up his name last week. So I apologize for that. I also wanna thank Thomas Raukamp, the Clan Sweeney and Tech Time with Eric for making super chat contributions over the course of one of my live streams. And we have some new supporters to thank, including a new gold level supporter, Tesla Wire. Thank you very much for your contribution. And I also want to thank Adam T87, who contributed via Floatplane. And I want to thank everyone who contributed this week and everyone who's been contributing on an ongoing basis and all of you who watch on an ongoing basis too because all of those things equal channel growth. Now, if you want to support the channel, you can. You can go to lon.tv support and make a monthly or a one-time contribution via my donor box page. Incidentally, donor box takes the least out of your contribution for fees. So people ask, what's the best way to help the channel? That is by far the best way, but we also want to be convenient. So we also, of course, support the YouTube membership program, Floatplane and Patreon. So any way you can help the channel is appreciated. But again, just watching is great too, because we need those views. Now I've got other channels that you can follow me on as well, including my extras channel where we do unboxings and supplementary content. And we've got my Amazon page where most of my product reviews end up completely ad free along with some live streams. You can engage with the channel with my weekly email list at lon.tv email. We also have a daily digest email that consists of whatever video I recently uploaded along with my blog posts that you can find at lon.tv digest and my blog is at blog.lon.tv. We also have a Facebook group, a Discord, and a Telegram where fans of the show can interact with me and each other. We also have a store where I sell previously reviewed items at prices lower than new, and you can find that at lon.tv store. And if you wanna get an email every time I add something to the store, you can sign up for a different email list at lon.tv slash store alert. And that is gonna do it for this week's weekly wrap up. Thank you all for tuning in. I've got a lot of fun stuff to work on this week, as always, quite a, co a collection of odd tech things that we always find to review here. We don't cover one thing here, we cover everything that interests me, and there's a lot. So we will get to that stuff later in the week, so stay tuned, and if you're not subscribed, hit the button. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, Chris Allegretta, Brian Parker, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Baby Metal Fox God, Tom Albrecht, Amda Brown, Matt Zagaya, and Tech Time with Eric. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month.
Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.